Hello and welcome back to a, a video about The Sims. Ah yes, it's been a while since I've delved into the weird and wonderful world of The Sims. Like four months or something. That is somewhat of a long time. So today, I'm going to treat myself and invite all you dear viewers along for the annual playthrough of Herbs, The Sims in the City. You may be yelling, Hang on, you have made this video before you twit. But I refute that sentiment. I have not in fact played the herbs. Sims in the City for Nintendo DS. Ah yes, this game has an extra chapter. It's different, I swear. Also, I kind of want an excuse to talk about the herbs more. I don't think my video about the herbs uh, did it justice. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the herbs for Game Boy Advance. I love this game so much. Yes, herbs, give me more herbs, delicious gameplay. Uh, also from the comments I had, everyone thoroughly enjoyed my grandma Hattie impression. Go baby bop. So drum roll please, I am going to perform it for you now. <coughs> Go baby <bop. laughs> Ah, yes, bravo, bravo, thank you, thank you. The Herbs, it's one of my favourite games, and I've played the Game Boy Advance version religiously since it was released as part of my earliest exposure to The Sims franchise. It was only last year that I realised there was a DS version, but looking at the small print now, I see that the Game Boy Advance version was released in November 2004, and in the UK, the DS version was released in March 2005. Why would I want a game that I already owned? I wanted all those delicious Spyro GBA games. However, the sands of times do change your judgement, and now 20 years later, give me everything to do with the herbs. I need lore, fan art, micro figures, music, I need it all. I must stop, but I will not. But the herbs for DS, like the GBA version, was released in November 2004 for the majority of the world except for this silly little island. It was published by EA and Maxis and developed by Gryptonite. Oh, beloved Gryptonite. Anyway, I'll stop with the sentimental rubbish. Spoiler alert if you want to play it for yourself with the wonder and awe of a child prudence. But anyway, without any further ado, on with the game. Already upon starting the game, the difference with having a dual screen are insane. Stuff is on both of the screens. And look everyone, we can spin the record like a proper DJ. To start, along with a poster of our notable faves, alongside a primate of some sorts. Carefully spinning the record, I type out my favourite three-lettered word. <laughs> you got it. Poo. Along with choosing our gender, left or right. And here she is. Poo in all her glory, up close and personal. And it's also kind of fun spinning the record thingy. You know what, that's it. Superior than the Game Boy Advance version. Only for this record spinning thingy as well. Now we take our quiz and it seems to be different than the Game Boy Advance version. Notable answers like DJ Crazy Claw, drink a gallon of OJ and outwit the bouncers are nowhere to be seen. And I've just realized that your answers give you different things like 30% less bladder erosion and such. Well, we do live and learn. One must answer the questions honestly. An honest Abe as it were, laying all my cards on the table. Meaning of life? Yes. Mad leak computer skills, with a Z of course. It's the 2000s, innit? The perfect crib has, yes, a barbed wire fence. You win 10,000 simoleons in a breakdancing competition, how do you spend it? Buy some fancy bling. Friday night, what do you and your crew do for fun? <laughs> we shoot them hoops, of course. Your new song has hit the top of the charts. What is it called? City Grammar, of course. Kelsey Grammar. I'm no stranger to an underperforming dinner party. Ooh. True or false? Money is everything. Um. <laughs> Give me the cash. Oh god, no, actually, no, no, no. I really don't want to be a nerdy. So, time to falsify some answers. I'm now content with my group of that of the artsies. So, with a quick spin of the record in the grand scheme of things, I'm content with Pooh and her associates. Now, it's time for our grandiose opening. Behold! The legendary Miniopolis.
Here, you're just an unknown janitor. Fighting for the respect of your fellow artsies. Daddy Big Bucks and Harlan King. <laughs> what? Your urban adventure begins. So, the handheld version of the herbs serves as a sequel to the handheld version of The Busting Out, The Busting Out, in 2003, where our spaceship ascends only to ultimately descend onto where our story begins here on King Tower in Minneapolis. Who is just hanging out, chilling by a spaceship, only needs to be approached by beloved Chris Thistle. Oh, my heart is singing. I love this game so much. Alas, I best stop to cleaning windows. Oh, look, this DS exclusive herb info. It really said what's going on. <laughs> Not gonna lie, so strange, so unique. So, right off to work, ever the grafter poo, we're cleaning shite off windows, just as God intended. There's just something about this mini game I loved the music, cleaning shite, or perhaps something even crazier like saving the shite up and scraping three at a time as one piece of shite. As RuPaul would say, ASMR in it. Approached by the stunning, beautiful Chris once again. However, with disappointment up her sleeve, as I'm told I'm fired. Oh poo. She has had the Sir Alan sugar treatment. It ain't right. I should be the Sir Alan Sugary, not the Sir Alan Sugared. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, I kinda do deserve to be fired for saving up that poo and scraping it as one. Not really an efficient employee of the month material. Alas, I should inquire about an employment tribunal, as it was not Harlan King that fired me. He sold the skyscraper last week and hasn't been seen ever since. And he sold it to no other than our friend from Sim Valley, affluent old money patriarch, a prime example of a caricature of a fat cat, even from his grandiose title, Daddy of the Big Books family. Did his mum really give birth to him and call him Daddy? It's kind of weird, no offence. But yeah, crazy, isn't it? Oh, I say. Oh, Mr. King loved this building. I suspect foul play. Chris then asked me if I needed any help, I, but I tell her, us artsies, nerdies in disguise, don't need no help. I woefully state to our Chris, Well, this means I'll have to move back to the farm. The artsies just don't know me yet. Chris allows me to stay in the building by befriending her under false pretenses and coercing her to let me stay by forcing her to have my bucket. After all the fun of bribery is complete, I spend my day learning how to bathe, eat and sleep. And once I piss myself, I let Chris know that I'm an adult now. However, the power's gone to her head. And I'm now her general dog's body, doing all sorts of odd jobs around the tower. I'm a squatter, you're a janitor, love. I start by pocketing a bed and fixing the telly, to which Harlan King, TM, hologram, AI, pre-recorded message begins to play. Um, girl, remember we hate AI. I didn't realise that Harlan King actually did sell the tower and he asked for a yacht to be thrown in. Oh, Harlan. You should be ashamed of yourself, you filthy little sellout. And just before he vanishes, for many a chapter, he makes me aware of some plans he's hidden in a dumpster in Urbania. What? I see a cheeky glimpse of what's to come. The difference between the Game Boy Advance version and the DS version. Oh, what wonders await our poo. So once I've bettered myself, I get chatting to our Chris, and well, bloody hell, she's bloody locked us in the building. And one thing leads to another, and I casually find myself picking the locks to Lily Gates' office and rummaging through her drawers. But suddenly, Daddy Big Books makes me want to say, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> I tell Daddy B that I've been a naughty person. I'm told that I'm going to be sent to prison. Ever the optimist and positive enthusiasm in a poo-like fashion, one states, cool, just like that board game. After all, Daddy's ultimate plan is to transform Minneapolis into a big fat urban theme park. He tells me his plan with an ever charming smile. Attempting to flirt my way out of the situation, I tell him, that's a pretty good idea. However, it was all in vain as I am now bricking oneself, as it were, trembling whilst being paraded through the town to an onslaught of booze from father. Whilst a local overseer of justice, Detective Dandy Man, has me by the scruff of the neck and flings me in jail. Alas, these bars cannot hold our poo for long. I ain't no spring chicken. I'm no stranger for these four walls of prison life. 
I know how to flirt my way out of this situation. I take advantage of the prison amenities, like eating my last free meal and using the facilities. As a child, I could never see the shower and couldn't work out what it was or how to use it. But I guess when you age, it seems contrary to popular belief is that your sight actually improves. Off I go to play hoops with a Z. It's the 2000s, of course and purchased my first home. How easy it is to obtain accommodation in Urbania. None of this three times what you were in bollocks, just 200 simoleons alongside a hope and a prayer and a wish that you'll pay your rent. Out of my two choices, I opt for the large brown stone. There's just something about that little sunset on the wall that screams hollybobs to me. A dream of a brighter future, pastures unexplored. Oh. Alas, my little train of thought of foreign destinations is broken by the realisation that apart from my little venue at the bottom and spinning the record at the beginning of the game, why are we not taking advantage of the touchscreen more? Why is the usage of the dual screen not being optimised in this game? However, all will be revealed to me in due course. Once I've furnished my humble abode, I bump into Lottie Cash, who must have me mistaken for a different party animal up, world-renowned club of the Exizzle. No Miss Cash, I am not the person who runs the coat room. However, I would like to um, partake in this old establishment of the Club of the Exizzle. After nattering away to Grandma Hattie, I happen upon this intimidating, almost drunk looking fella. And I'm not being mean when I say this, but I'd cross the street if I saw him in real life. But as it so happens, I'm playing a game so I can make my wildest dreams come true. So I do by approaching the bloke. Moki is his name, begging for some small change, 10 or 300,000 simoleons, ah yeah sure I'm sh I can spare you a single simoleon. You do be asking for a gene splicer, have I got a spare gene splicer, you know what dang, I just gave my last one away. I humour the bloke and ask him where this elusive island is, only to be met with, well, this. Yeah, um, yeah, that's enough of that for today. I happen upon my beloved Giuseppe Mezzo Alto, straight out of Sim Valley Slammer. Oh, I've missed you. I'm so sorry for betraying you and busting out. Seeing all these characters warms my heart. Talking to them is like having a hot bevy whilst watching some shite ITV drama on a rainy night. So comforting, so nostalgic. I head to the auction to purchase the shrunken heads for Berkeley Clod, but I accidentally spent all of his money on stuff for me because I thought it was mine. Oh well. The prison has a tramp, short for trampoline. Ah, the differences in the Game Boy Advance version and the DS version are just, well, astronomical. We treat our crystal to a night out in Pop World and she's bloody loving it. So much so that I've been granted access to the exclusive Club X Zizzle. Too poor to purchase any beads. I instead optimistically type in the word bucket into the password area in the hopes that it is the same as the Game Boy Advance version. And what do you know? It is. And we're also treated to Crystal, Pooh, and Darius busting some fresh moves with a Z, obviously. <laughs> it's the 2000s. I shrug at the camera and treat myself to some kip after my hard work. Alas, the work is never ending, as I'm now required to flirt my way into university with handsome Dr. Maximilian Moore. However, my plant runs out of battery, you know, needs want and all that, but this game is actually kind of hard. I persevere and write myself a thesis about that plant. I can now graze my anatomy with the old boy himself. Now allow me to introduce you to Cannonball Coleman. I always thought that he shared his namesake with what I assumed was a lyric about a famous musician in a Kate Bush song. However, I see now that I just imagined her saying Cannonball Coleman. It's in that song, the violin. I thought she was like, Cannonball Coleman, violin, my... <laughs> You can't, you can't unhear it, you can't unsee it. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. We befriend him, critique some graffiti, and once we complete his song and bribe him with a saxophone read, he allows us to perform on the big stage, live at the Apollo. Michael McIntyre, John Bishop, Ramesh and Ranganathan, a Rob Beckett, or Pooh. It's just, just all meant to be. We run a load of errands for various blokes handing my hard-earned cash over to Dusty Hog and reluctantly handing over them cool shrunken heads and in return receiving a hoverboard. I regrettably treat myself to a flirt with Moki and 
wouldn't decide instead to treat myself to feeding local himbo Ewan for pizza for 40 days and 40 nights. All that said and done, our grandma Hattie, most woman of all, states, what are you doing wandering around with no purpose? What if I told you that my purpose was to have no purpose? What then? I gladly hand all my money over to Grandma Hattie instead of pay my bills, and in return we see many a vendor of Minneapolis protesting, which enrages our daddy. However, one now has access to sim quarter. I confidently approach what I thought was going to be the person selling pets, ready to do the Scottish hooscat glutch. I'm gobsmacked, dumbfounded, even insulted at what I'm met with instead. Street artist? Street artist? What am I supposed to do with you, mate? What am I supposed to do? Earn an honest living, I guess. What an absolute joke. So after earning a few honest bobs, I get talking to Detective Dandy Man. He's heard through the grapevine that I've made a few friends in the old hood. <laughs> what? Now he needs some help and asks me to stake out old Salty's riverboat. I ask if I can be an undercover janitor. I know that role very well. No, he believes that I, poo, am destined for bigger things. And that bigger thing, of course, is a cheeky game of Magoo Monkey. And call me a winner because I won. Gambling game. <laughs> oh yes, Texas Hold'em poker, eat your heart out. So once my conceitedness is worn off, I'm approached by our beloved Giuseppe, and I state, Magoo Monkey is an oddly compelling game. Afterwards, Giuseppe tells me that Daddy B said he'd send over a joker. Well, kid, I hope you get to check the, wink, newspaper office bulletin board before you die. Wink, wink. Hmm. If I hadn't have played this game before, I'd say, what does it all mean? However, I come across yet another DS exclusive fellow, Jack Ideal. Maybe handsome, but in a Tory kind of way. And a woman just lingering around the docks like a bad smell. Sharona Faster. I just don't know how to feel about it all, but... <laughs> Sniff sniff, man, I'm sure I'm stinky. I follow the instructions on that bulletin board. One is ordered to rummage through the shrubbery. I glance at the piece of paper one has discovered, where I'm told that the answer I seek lies beyond the grave. I scour the topsoil of this tombstone and discover a finger along with a piece of paper. Scribed on it is, to have this note would be another feather in his hat. <laughs> it's definitely Berkeley Claude, isn't it? From him we receive a briefcase to which I give to the detective to successfully tape a microphone to it and make sure to let Giuseppe know that it's been tampered with before I hand it over to him. After bumping into the most weathered 16 year old and only person in my opinion who should be allowed to call Daddy B Daddy, his son Luther L Big Bucks. I then bump into who else but bloody Gary Geezer. What? Gary Geezer? He almost gives me Jebediah S. Jerky vibes mixed with Uncle Hayseed. If they had a child and called it Gary Geezer, that would indeed be Gary Geezer. Now we have bumped into another DS exclusive fella. Goes by the name Buster Cruz. Hello, hello, my name's Buster Cruz. Well, I guess he's British. I flirt with the bloke and yeah, these DS fellas do have some expressions. But back to the task at hand, I hand over a bunch of money to most herb, Roxana Moxie, and I am now a bouncer of the calf, protector of the artsies throughout Urbania from the rich riches, and aiding people in performing game-breaking illusions apparently. Now bouncer, protector of grandma's Hattie's secret meeting at the graveyard, and deterring Darius with great ease. Now an overnight philanthropist and benefactor, I rustle up the smallest amount of money as possible to donate to the museum and then get trapped in the cafe with King of the Riches, Luther and Queen of the Nerdies, Polynominal. I escape only to be met with another quest from part-time lawyer and full-time bitch Lily Gates. In the Game Boy Advance version, she wants to open up the bumper boat rides. However, here she's on a mission to purchase the old Exizzle factory. Befriending Ewan under false pretenses and listening to his tale of how he casually saved DS exclusive bloke Jack Ideal. Once the usual routine of pissing myself is complete, 
I begged Dusty Hog to help with the Exizzle factory. However, I must beat him in a bike battle, and after somehow creating a bike with optimum brum brums required, I beat our Dusty with flying colours and received a hog of my own, disturbing and upsetting the peace of Minneapolis. I bribed the university with cold hard cash to give me a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and once that's all said and done, I befriend Polynominal under false pretenses. I'm sorry, I've always got to befriend them but with false pretenses. So with the axes or factory back up and running and that game, that fucking game that I hate, absent from my DS Herbs universe, I ponder whether I like that random TikTok influencer, Danny Carbonari, much like when she visits the Sheen factory, who could have a gander and work out what an Xizzle is at the Xizzle factory. Why are they scattered around Urbania? Why do I get them when I make a friend? And why do they make my bladder bigger and shite? Is it extracted from beloved Emperor Xizzle's hat? I have questions. But hey, here's, here's a queen. Here's a queen. Mambo Loa, a woman with wisdom and many a knowledge about the occult. We get her chatting and nattering as it were to beloved Mambo Loa about Daddy B wanting to purchase part-time raver and resident captain of Minneapolis. Old Salty's river boat to use as his personal closet. I'm told Pepper Pete would not let this slide, but alas, he has disappeared at sea. On a shark wrestling trip, Mambo Loa has this crazy idea that if I were to maybe become one with Pepper Pete, I may be able to make the sail fall through. I rummage through the Thrift Emporium's hangers for my very own navy peacoat, purchasing the only beard this potch twat had in stock, and patiently await three to five business days for the arrival of my sailor's cap I ordered online from Etsy, not Amazon. Suddenly and miraculously, I'm a pensioner. How frightening. Approaching all my friends of Sim Quarter in an attempt to alarm the locals in my new get-up. My attempts were a success. They are all left just dumbfounded. Approaching what was Pepper Pete's old home, the riverboat, one is greeted by my surrogate brother with nothing but pure love. This feels correct. This feels like home. A wave of nostalgia and sentimentality comes over me for a life that I never had. I tell my standing sibling that I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308. <laughs> Our Salty should be ashamed of himself though. He'd be like, curse me, for I have done a very greedy and foolish thing. I will respond with a, he stopped taking baths. My brother Salty makes me well aware that he indeed did have a bath last month. But no, he has tarnished the memory of our dear father by agreeing to sell the boat. Twas the smell and sight of the Somalians that broke me. Oh, you disappoint me, brother. But Pooh's disguise work like a charm, and we successfully manipulate Old Salty into refusing to sell. And oh boy, didn't that make Daddy mad? He's all red. Meanwhile, Pooh who, who does her reveal and becomes stunning Pooh once again. I tell Daddy Big Books that he kind of looks like Dr. Fraser Crane, and then slyly states that he can't be held responsible for my recent accident. He whacks me with his Victorian style walking cane and flings me into the water, topped off with a silly little jig. Aching and drenched, I awake in the bayou, a hidden place in Minneapolis apparently only accessible by being flung off Old Salty's riverboat. Whilst regaining consciousness, I'm overlooked by two brothers, Bio Boo and Crawdad Clem, scratching their bellies pondering the real questions. I make myself at home in the bio, a much more peaceful place. No cannonball Coleman saxing his phone, no residual booming from Club Xizzle. But ain't no rest for the wicked. I need to get back to the mainland. I must stop Daddy B. In the wake of proving to Clem that I am no vampire, I torment many a manny implant and find a light to scare the warrior apparition of Daddy B hybrid away. You know what they say, let in the light and there's no darkness or something. But Daddy Big Bucks has his resources, I guess. Now it's time to meet lizard man Lloyd, the albino alligator, who, I don't know about you, but he's kinda. There's just something about lizard dudes. Kaiman from Doro Hey Doro, Spyro from Spyro. They're all kinda, you know, 
<laughs> but enough of that. Bless Lloyd, he gives me a little trinket to give to the fellas. I've now earned my bragging rights and listened to Boo talking all this shite about some startup GoFundMe page he started for his smoothie making business. But no, confronting Lloyd was not enough. We must fiddle battle the whimsical fiddle bloke at being fantastic frantic fiddler. And once achieved, he gives me the other half of the locket. Crazy how convenient that was. I gift the glocket to Clem, who exclaims, how did I find this? You know what they say. I get by with a little help from my friends. My dear lad. I manipulate and persuade Boo that there are no such thing as vampires, knowing full well there are lizard men, fiddling imps, and daddy bee apparitions, but vampires? <laughs> no. Forced him to take me back to Minneapolis, he fiddles the fiddle and opens the door with a fiddle dee dee. We both admire the grandfather clock in the mausoleum, as well as the atmosphere, and Poo and Boo do be vibing. And why not be inside Ephraim Earl's transparent body too? Treat yourself in it. However, suddenly the clock rotates, pulling Boo in on that Scooby Doo type shit. So very Poo like, one shrugs at the camera. And with the spirit of stiff upper lip and the camaraderie of my friends I have loved and lost, we power on, a song comes to mind. Power on, men! Escaping the bio and back on familiar pastures, I run into my favourite activist, come grandma, Grandma Hattie, and she informs me that Glass Town is now open and we have free reign over the whole of Minneapolis. However, father of the big books has been up to no good. At this point in the story, I'm well aware that running is now illegal, so I'd be walking, but it's so bloody tedious that I end up running and get myself chucked in jail where I meet our nan once again. We'll have to stop meeting like this. But yeah, why is Grandma Hattie running with a cane? <laughs> it really is true. A woman's work is never done. One happens on Detective Dandy Man, who tells me that I'm not gonna believe what he's gonna tell me. And I'd be like, <laughs> Don't you tell me what I am or I'm not going to believe. Running, believe it or not, has been banned within city limits. Mm, causing noise pollution. I bet the culprit of this new legislation is that Gary Geezer. I exclaim that me, Pooh, relies on running. And Detective Dunn agrees with me. Ah, I, I see. <laughs> You are also a man of the lycra. I force grandma who will gladly write a letter with some stern words to some person to allow us all to run again and get this sleepy loser gaudy puck to take my letter to wherever it needs to go. But I must raise my popularity because apparently I'm a nobody and a loser. Booed by local journalist Lincoln Broadsheet, clearly the victim of my minus 100 friendship ex sizzle bead, I attempt to edge running, alas. It does not work like that and get myself flung in the slammer once again. All hope is not lost. There's free food here. I collect the map from the riverboat and encounter a cheeky parrot along the way, eagerly pulling an all-nighter awaiting the opening of the university to give this bloke his map. And that's it. Better than the Royal Mail. I'm free to run as till my heart's content. And now we have a nifty new means of transport. A hovercraft. Living my Diddy Kong racing fantasy. Yet again, I hand 5,000 simoleons to Roxanne and Moxie for some carnival reason and gifting her this rabid cretin from my pocket. I also match make Luther, that girl is fine, big books and Misty Waters together in the club when they're literally next to each other. Couldn't they have done this themselves? We come across our Teresa Bullhorn. She's been right mardy cow because daddy big books is always playing movies of himself, which is kind of a slay. You won't find the softy household hard up for a rewatch of a prudent playing the Sims spin-off. The solution to this is, well, of course, a satirical stage show of Daddy Big Books. I just want to know also, why is this bloke always in the toilet watching the locals piss? I befriend Dusty Hog with the goal to get him to play Daddy in our play. I attempt to befriend this bitch Sue. Now don't get me wrong, she seems cool and I've never had a problem with her, but my god this playthrough had me screaming at the game. She's been so awkward. What a bitch. 
I bide my time, waiting three to five business days for my taxidermy alien to arrive, to embellish the stage ready for the Daddy B think piece, only to discover that my light up teddy bear cannot be placed on the stage. Meanwhile, in the Sioux department, I'm on the struggle bus. I can't remember her being this awful to befriend. Now she's said that she'd rather study than speak to me. Well, you know what, bitch? You're up there with that chasmic freely broke. Two words. I hate you. On with the show. Quite literally. I head to the pictures to spectate the show for myself and we're off to a flying start with Ewan quite literally jumping for joy into his seat. Entertain me in a medieval kind of way. Look at my gorgeous set design. Someone needs to hire me right now. And oh look, Daddy Big Bucks is mad. My next quest handed to me by Roxana Moxie. I'm called on to proceed to Paradise Island, only accessible to those with the privilege of owning a hovercraft. To represent my fellow artsies, cup of Kevin hand, I proceed to the island with haste, splicer island plans, Nan's cookbook and a nerdy trophy, and a hope and a wish. I answer every coconut question one by one, earning a quick book with each coconut. The next part is always my downfall, needing a piss when I need to annoy my fellow contestants. With my head hung in shame and the disappointment of letting down my fellow artsies, I woefully head back to my humble abode. Oh, hello, Luther L. Big Bucks. He wants to know what his daddy, daddy, is up to. After I show Polynomial that I am a person of integrity, first of all, by gifting her this nerdy trophy I found and talking about the world, talking about books, cheering up, talking about the university, telling a bad pun, etc. She eventually spills the tea. I pull many an all-nighter, living, sleeping in the newspaper office with Lincoln, my number one enemy. And you know what? I don't blame him. It must bloody stink in there. But it's all for the greater cause, the quest for knowledge. And whilst waiting for my 3 to 4 a.m. slot to sneak into the big book's office, I bide my time by watering plants and admiring my handiwork. <laughs> oh yes, horticulture. 3 a.m. has arrived. I make my way to the secret room I've heard so much about. Once all that's said and done, I decide to visit the bio. It's been a while since I've heard from them brothers. I happen upon Clem who asks what I've done with his brother. I don't know, mate. We head to the mausoleum, the last place we saw our dear old friend. He's just chained up and blue, like that Rihanna song, but not blue. Oh no, mate, what's happened to you, you silly billy? And he turns out he's a vampire. Mambo. Uh, Mambo. Mate, I swear. Move it. Mambo Lower, expert of the occult and the supernatural. Help me. Although she assumes that I am the one who has become the vampirism. I can't help but feel hopeful and loved by her words of support and encouragement about my apparent ill case of vampirism. The cure is yes, chocolate. The cure of many ailment. Depression. Cadbury's mini eggs. PMS. Cadbury's caramel. Vampire. Chocolate bunny. <laughs> yeah, with my um, terrible cooking skills in this game, the best I can muster up is a bunny. Mix wizard, along with plenty of chockey in hand, I head home to make many a mix. However, after my single cooking lesson, I have made one too many mixtures and have no space to purchase an oven. In a desperate attempt to lighten my load, I gift Crystal one of my mixtures, only to be met with disgust. Baking time and one of six mixtures worked. And that's good enough for me, cause Boo is now pink. Once we have played enough of this tedious university minigame, we have enough skill to free our beloved Boo. Ah yes, off to the swamp you go my son. Damaged beyond repair, I decide that it is better for one to die from starvation than to salvage what I already have. I awake sweaty and dehydrated into the hospital and hop on my motorcycle towards the carnival area of Glass Town. Over in the corner I see a ninja, could it be Heidi? Heidi's shadows? I approach, but with no caution, and a puff of smoke, and awaken, and an enclosure alongside who else but Harlan King, who cannot see me for some reason. He tells me whilst away on his permanent vacation on his yacht, Daddy Big Bucks showed up and kidnapped him. I'd be like, how's Daddy B so strong? But then I remember I got flung overboard by him. And 
you know, Holland King, what's he gonna do? He's just a little nerdy bloke. I'm told that it's only a matter of time before he does damage with that time machine. His time machine? Apparently plotting to go back in time to purchase every plot of land in Minneapolis. Oh, speak of the devil. Here is father now, calling poo ever the optimist, never the bride. He goes on to say, Ah, what happy days will be when I no longer worry about the likes of you, Grandma Hattie, and even my meddling son. Who are you doing this for? You're not doing it for your family. What are you doing it for? He boards the time machine and scarpers off. Mine and Harlan King's private enclosure explodes, leaving poor old Poo trembling and fearing the future of Minneapolis. Harlan King then asks me, what's up? Um, <laughs> I think it was that massive explosion, mate. Mr. King goes on to say, let's get out of here. I want to see if the vending machine still serves free food. <laughs> What? Greeted by Maximilian Moore the way one should be greeted, by tipping the fedora and being called a fine lady. However, I should have known that he had ulterior motives. As he had thought, me and Daddy Bloody Big Books were mates and wanted tickets to the Daddy Big Books movie. Max Love, have you not been playing the game? We're enemies. I'm happy to be civil. I'm happy to be mates. But you know what? He threw me off a boat. And he wants two bloody tickets. And then says, yeah girl, one for me and one for you. <laughs> Smooth. I make my inquiries around town and happen upon Lily Gates, who makes me aware that she's taking care of daddy's affairs whilst he's sleeping. Uh, asked to not bother him for a couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> right, sleeping. So once I have become disgustingly popular, I dress to impress in my slain gear. Yeah, Pooh slated and attends the premiere like the local celebrity that I am, welcomed by Darius still in his tracky bees, and suddenly Daddy Big Books appears, stating that this is the last bit of escapist fun that I'll be having for a while. How evil. Then he disappears into the night. <laughs> Shut up, mate. Anyway, look how fabulous everyone looks, dressed to the nines. Dusty Hog and his evening style bandana. You and, and let us not forget, that Chris Thistle ate in that gown, tens across the board. Call me mother. Oh yeah, and don't forget Max, he slid to ya. Yeah. Well, that's it. No, the premiere's done. There wasn't even a movie. So I waltz out of the cinema, stumble upon a massive Daddy Big Book statue that's being erected, alongside Harlan King lingering around like a bad smell, asking where I've been. Um, listen mate, I pay my way around here in Minneapolis. I'm an adult. Pooh doesn't have to answer to you. However, if you must know, I went to the pictures with Max. He's now demanding of me to organise and build a time machine and reclaim the land. So I forced Sue to become my inventor for a measly 10 nuclear rods I found scattered around the bio and a simple contractor and I know the perfect bloke. Ah, oh, Ewan. And all he wants is a measly 10,000 simoleons that I just don't have. Reluctantly, I hand over my hard-earned cash to Ewan and my hard-earned rods to Sue. I'm not entirely sure what we're supposed to do from here on out, but after spending a night behind bars with much to think about, I head to the chopper garage to collect my time machine. Much like Argos, I'm met by the bitch called Sue. Oh, hello, Sue. Time machine in my pocket. Hope in my heart. One gets chatting to the beloved Giuseppe. A heart to heart, as it were. And off I go to December 31st, 1870, for the sake of our lovely town. Stepping off my time machine after stepping back in time. And who do I happen upon? But R.F. from Earl. But alive? Oh, what a sight to behold. As he sought out Daddy B's flag, good and proper, I take his word for it as he is a beloved character and return back to the current day King Tower. In the wake of my timely return, only to see Daddy B doing well, such a splendid jig. He greets me with joy and says, Well, hello, my tenth nemesis. You're just in time to catch my special announcement to the good people of Minneapolis. He begins to read some sort of letter with words on. And all of a sudden, he changes his tune and he's like, What have you done? <laughs> and yeah, what have I done? No, really. Daddy Big Bucks in his last ditch attempt of desperation to change the past. He attempts to make a break for it in his time machine, but 
trusty old detective dandy man just arrives in the nick of time and comes in and sorts him out good and proper. As always, I'm paraded through town, surrounded by my mates. The camera then pans to Misty, busting some moves. The camera then pans onto Urbania, and oh my god, is that Optimum Alfred and a robot? They're now busting some of them moves. The camera now pans onto Simba Quarter, and Old Salty, the town's oldest raver, is now busting them moves as a parrot circles him. Now onto the bio, where all the fellas are fiddling as one. All the strains and pressures put on the lovely town have been resolved by me, Pooh, a hero as it were. I love this ending so much more than the Game Boy Advance one. Even the NPCs are out here cheering on Pooh. We get to talking to Harlan King and golly gosh, you did beat that man at his own game. I tell him it ain't nothing but a thing, dog. Apparently Daddy B will be living his days far from a jail cell on his little plot of land that is rightfully his. Then this king bloke says, don't get too big for your birches. Um, fuck off mate. And as always, here is Daddy B wailing on Nutria Island, along with a slideshow of Daddy B on the island and his friendship with Lloyd blossoming. Behold, Pooh statue, here for your viewing pleasure. And that's it. Or is it? Now the moment I have patiently waiting for. Our Splicer Island antics. I'm treading on unfamiliar territory. Pastures are new. I have my Splicer Island plans in hand, as I have had throughout the story thus far. And recall my initial day in Urbania Park and encountering Moki for the first time. He did mention that Splicer Island of sorts, and by giving him a corn dog, he spills the tea. Apparently, one of these DS people, Sharona Faster, can transport me to this new area on her water taxi. She starts talking bollocks about apoplexy or some shite, but I give her 500 smackaroos and bide my time by having a nap in my disgusting house until 8am tomorrow. The time has come to travel to the elusive and mysterious Splicer Island. I board what appears to be a gondola, only to disembark on a metal pier greeted by this eerie music. I wander around this barren and seemingly empty wasteland of an island and happen upon this bloke. I frighten him, and myself in the process. Futomaki is his name. Chef, construction worker, and can sing if needs be. A jack of all trades as it were. He asks of me, what am I doing here? This island has been declared a disaster. Um, I don't know, Mo Moki sent me. So I pick the lock to the gate, tickle a monkey for a bit. But of course, I've got to earn 5,000 simoleons to actually even do anything. Oh my god, I'm bloody sick of having to pay for everything. Why does everything cost something? So I be working, I be grafting, I be drinking the rosebud smoothie and transcending through time and space. And once I've earned my keep, I give Futo that 5,000 he was demanding off me. And after befriending a cheeky monkey, then, then I am told to come back in 10 days. 10 bloody days? 10 bloody days. I have no awareness of time. I'm engrossed in the herbs universe, but I need results now. After killing 10 days, I get a little notification that the island's complete. So once I've annoyed Daddy Big Books successfully, who now spends his days crying on Nutria Island and his evening gallivanting around Paradise Island, it's time for Arpu to visit the completed Splicer Island. Upon my disembarkation to the island, I notice that the music is, say, somewhat more dramatic now. Futo calls me his generous benefactor. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I should think so. Now, Futo wants me to find a smoothie operator, an entertainment manager, and a genetic scientist. Bloody hell, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. Exploring my new stomping ground, I am reminded of somewhat of Paradise Island, except more islandy. What? 
Gary Geezer is here. Clearly I must ask him if he'd like to work here. And then he bluntly says to me, I have other priorities, Pooh. How rude. Once again soiling myself, I'm exposed to the array of creatures that the island has to offer. And I'm kind of scared, so I head back home, just in time to receive my high-heeled shoe chair, a sleigh to some extent. I'm taken aback. I notice that resident cool guy, Moki, has an exclamation mark above his head. As I attempt to approach the bloke, it almost looks as if I'm mocking him. I make my inquiries. Would you, Moki, like to work on the island of the Splice? And conveniently, he has only just recently quit his job. Wait, he says... That was eight years ago. I'm sorry, Mike Moki, you are a vibe, a pioneer, we must stand. Out of all the extensive list of three jobs, I ask Moki to be a genetic scientist, as he has mentioned the gene splicing a few times. Exhilarated at the thought, Moki be like, I do have some experience in that. No, you do not, you crazy old man. But you know what? I'm gonna regret this, but how about you come over to my place and shower? I didn't agree to this. Moki goes on to say he's not felt hot water on his skin since Lottie spat on him in August. <laughs> this bloke is so funny. <laughs> However, I'm left pondering my next move. How can I shower this bloke? Instead, I focus on other positions that need filling. I wander around the town asking people if they want a job, particularly the DS exclusive lot. But met with outstanding rejection, I remember one of the bio boys saying they wanted to open a smoothie franchise or something. But alas, they both have other priorities, what the fuck? Whilst returning from the bio, through the secret passage towards the jail, the cheat ninja, and helped myself to many a smoothie. And this must be the smoothie at the franchise that the brothers are on about. So I exit my shortcut to the bio and to the jail. And happened on some strange events that are happening in here. I have to do a double take. Moki being escorted into the jail cell. To the shower I struggled with so much as a child. Flames and vapour engulf Moki. Who knew that imperial leather was so bloody powerful? And f fucking Moki did a tonight Matthew I'm gonna be. Cause he come out as a completely different bloke with a completely different voice. <laughs> what? Voila! He says. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Mauricio Keys, genetic scientist, author of the book, A New Pair of Genes. <laughs> what? What's going on? I deduce that all the people that are going to work on this newfound island will be the DX exclusive characters. Buster as Ents manager, because of course he used to manage a gas station in SimCity TM. And it appears that local himbo, not Tory, Jack Ideal, will be the smoothie bloke. I decide that I actually like this guy now. <laughs> Look what he says when being offered the job. Perfect, a job with free food and no mental stimulation. Count me in. Is this bloke me? I have obtained my staff, ready to provide an epic island experience for the punters. I transform the old glad rags into something far more island appropriate and head back to the island to find Futo. Alas, he is nowhere to be found. I head to the nearest telephone to find out where he is. The sushi bar? A sushi bar? With no time to waste, I rush over and play the new mini game. And as it turns out, you have to read the in instructions, otherwise you're shit at it. But wow, I really just am like just fruit ninja in it. Remember that? Blast from the past. Exploring the new island, I realise that this luxury room must be mine as the burglar alarm. The purple burglar alarm went off. Oh, the perks of being a benefactor, I guess. We happen upon Moki, aka this bloke. I need to know, why did he change his name? Why is his hair so quaffed? I miss the old Moki. But he tells me it's been a pleasure fiddling with his new splicing equipment. Well, as long as you're happy, mate. That's all that matters, I guess. Quickly scoring a burger, I head down to the basement of the laboratory. I meet some bitch locked in his basement, apparently. Cynthia Braintrust. Apparently no other friends than her pets. Well, no need to worry now, I'll be your friend. Cause you know what, I want 100% popularity. However, she interrupts me. She notices that I have quite a collection of amber at hand. She must be able to smell it on me. We must follow these rules and I really can't be arsed reading. So I don't even know what I'm doing. Almost certain it would be easy with a touch screen. Ah, uh, anyway, look, we made a beautiful pet. I name him Bollocks. Part of the Pudence lineage, I guess. 
spin that record. I play with bollocks and then I need a wee so I decide to take him home with me and oh my god it's an amazing day. Ewan is sitting on the girly chair. He is indeed an ally. As benefactor, philanthropist and sexy popular alien, PhD in swagometry and shopping, I hit up Glass Town Mall to decorate my new home on Splicer Island in the swankiest of wank, including this race car bed. Now ladies, form an orderly queue. There's enough poo to go round. But you know what, bollocks is pissing me off, following me around everywhere, and it makes weird little creature noises all the time, cramping my style. But off to the Ents manager, Buster, to see what we can do with this little fella. Buster says, call blimey and stuff that people think British people would say, and I suppose in a way they do. I remember at school we sang the song, never had a ball for me life. A lyric I'll never forget was the, oh call blimey, I'm so grimy. And James the First, they said he was the worst, as we all pointed to a poor bloke in our class called James. <laughs> yes. After a few more British platitudes, such as Bob's your uncle, and Pooh's like, no, my uncle is called Hayseed. Shut up, Pooh, you're a twat too. Buster wants me to find more people to compete in the pets show, like Cynthia, Gary Geezer, and Maximilian Moore. I thought there was going to be Sharona Faster who would have liked the animals. I'm sure it was her who used to sell the pets. But no, I have a speedy kip in my race car bed and go to see our Buster for the pet show. Buster calls me a daft git just before throwing me off my game in the pet show. <laughs> what the fuck was that mini game? I, it, it was evil. I must play it again. Alas, I cannot as there is an island announcement from Cynthia who proclaims a disturbing and splicer labs. Come quick, there's a... no. Burke. Upon exiting, I begin to applaud. Old Salty, he hoists a flag in honour of Splicer Island. As Cynthia's solitary friend, I rush to the lab with bollocks by my side and who else but Berkeley Clod has locked himself in the lab. He flirtatiously tells me he's just up to a little mischief is all. Uh, just because you rid the town of Daddy Big Bucks doesn't mean I can't stir up a little more trouble. And then Nautily says there's always room for an epilogue. Okay, Mrs. Casher Davis. Oh, this is far too much jiggery pokery for my liking. All of a sudden, Berkeley be raising the roof. A sudden explosion alongside a cheeky giggle as Berkeley and Cynthia collapse. Appears a tiny man and everyone. <laughs> Guys, I am I'm absolutely pissing myself at this point. What? This game is truly superior than the Game Boy Advance version. How have I denied myself of this, this experience for 20 years? Encountering winky wee books. Initially, I thought that Berkeley Clod had turned himself into a Winky, but no, this is a pet Berkeley has created. Guys, this is amazing. This little bloke really is asking the real questions. Where am I? When am I? Who am I? And why do I possess the singularly evil desire to wreak havoc and mayhem for no definite purpose? <laughs> this is amazing. Did Berkeley steal daddy's hair or something? What's going on? I tell Winky that the name Winky Wee Books is really cute and no, he doesn't like that. I'm met with aggression and a puff of smoke. Now me, Cynthia and Berkeley are trapped within the confines of this weird enclosure, seaweed like flame things. I love Berkeley Clod as well. He blames me for not stopping him from him creating Winky Wee Books. I, I didn't exactly put your heart in it. What? Then Berkeley begins to tell me a story to pass the time. I call upon bollocks. Oh little bollocks, come here and finally put yourself to use and go and find some help. <laughs> and have I become bollocks? Bollocks speaks to old Salty because being a pirate means he can speak bollocks. Salty tells me of something terrible happening at the carnival that is a result of Winky. Winky has surrounded himself with an army of ravenous nutria. I'm told that there's only one person who can save the day and that is Pepper Pete, but he is no longer with us, God rest his soul. He happens to mention Pepper Pete's parrot, so I go and visit the only parrot I know and scare my friends along the way. 
I found myself drawn to a reoccurring thought of what the fuck is going on? The bird greets me in a jovial manner, screeching, hello bollocks, hello bollocks. Speaking as bollocks, I tell the parrot that I'm really bummed out. However, I'm told that Peppa Pete is stranded, not missing or dead, which is the common conclusion of the people of Minneapolis. He is in fact only needs a sail for his vessel and we must find a sail to give to the parrot. He will take it to Pete. I roam the streets in the districts of Urbania, lonely, scared and woeful, and head towards the carnival. And while, wow, this is certainly something, I attempt many a time to get through this weird maze. Eventually I give up and then just give the flag to the bird. And I find myself wandering through the streets of the town I've come to love and call home once again. And I'm greeted and also booed and spat out. Like I am poo, but I'm bollocks. Just, but I'm bollocks in bollocks' body, but I'm also poo inside it. Ah, such a surreal experience. Now at the carnival, and here he is, our hero, Peppa Pete. What a strong soul, too. Apparently floating in the ocean for a year, but oh no, he's not gonna let Winky Wee Bucks ruin his homecoming. Much like a superhero, Peppa Pete vanishes into the night. In the wake of my many attempts of whatever the fuck that maze was, we reach Winky and his army of rabid rodents. He asks me what I'm doing. Come to join his Nutria army? And oh golly gosh, we distracted well because here's Peppa Pete. He whips out his net and captures that mischievous little bloke. Pooh greets Peppa Pete with such delight and I'm asked if the legendary pet is mine. <laughs> Why of course. Bollocks is my best friend and I'm told to cherish old bollocks. Pete says, bollocks saved Minneapolis from certain destruction. Hey wait a minute, I think I did that. Then he says to me, I didn't see you fighting the devious winky wee bucks. No, bollocks is the hero of the day. Treat bollocks right you hear? Mate, I was controlling Bollock. Pete goes to visit old Salty and they communicate in their pirate language and have a little pirate rave with their parrot. Aww. And that's it. A credits roll with the amazing song. I witness Winky Wee Bucks in the carnival jail with my own eyes. Well, all that's left for Pooh now is to complete the rep goals. I've already completed the artsy and the streetsy goals and I'm now an owner of a genie lamp. So after struggling to craft a petrified chess piece, I treat myself to a cheeky vibe, and then struggling to unfriend the most difficult person to make an enemy of, Roxana Moxie. I eventually become a nerdy and look at my fucking dweeb walk. And I also unlock this mini game I've never unlocked before, Spell Champ. Oh. So? What now? Well, I complete the Richie's goals, and get this century deprivation tank. Oh my god, my dreams have come true. And look at my walk, I'm serving so hard now. What now? Visit the street artist and take advantage of the DS exclusive activities. I try to paint Splatoon, but the screen is too small, so I give up. And just decide to write help. I rush back home to my townhouse and sim quarter to hang my painting. You know what? For the hell of it, I plug in my trusty drawing tablet no longer used for drawing, only used for DS games, and try my hand at DNA splicing once again. Cause I know bollocks save the day and everything, but I want a better pet, you know? Then there's the fucking tapping part, I hate this part. But the ethereal sounds of splicing DNA will allow me to power through. But it's so fucking annoying, superior sample recovered from the amber but me being shy at the tapping turns it into an average. After making a bollocks clone, a B-Tech Charizard, I eventually make something different, a chicken, and with the spin of a disc, I name him Cock. So after a quick kip, I go and play with my little cock. And once we've become acquainted, it is time for us to do what you're supposed to do with pets. Enter them into crofts. It's so annoying though, the green-eyed monster has its grip on me. I want that green fella or a unicorn. And after a long struggle, I bloody come second. I hate you, cock. You let me down. So I force him to stay in his enclosure. I release this bloke I have jovially named Dick, but you can only have three pets at a time. I'm optimistic that I'll make it one of these rabbits with the horns because they're really cute. Only to end up with a useless sample. We kill Dick for no reason. Time to play Fruit Ninja again, but I will read the rules. Oh, I still shit it. 
With all that said and done, what is left for our poo to do than to show you round my humble abode as most popular bitch in town? Well, apart from Harlan King, I can't bloody find him or invite him round, so frig that. 95% popularity is enough. Here is the boudoir, race car bed, calm yourselves everyone. And here, everyone, alongside my skydiving machine is my army of Optimum Alfreds. I attempt to unleash them. Alas, there is nothing that needs to be cleaned. On to the Exizzle room. This is my army of Emperor Exizzles. There would be more, but I can't be asked waiting for three to five business days for them to arrive. So, they will do. Look at me, the pinnacle of strength now. And on to the drawing room. Surrounding myself with many a fish tank, only successful people have fish tanks. Look, even a robot dog. I can even rock out or sit on my sexy chair. Or perhaps even submit to the chamber. Subsequent to completing all my rep goals, I've gained access to all the clubhouses, which would be great if I had furniture that I wanted to put in it. Alas, I want all my dust catchers in my house with me. But I do have to say that the Nerdy's Clubhouse is somewhat amusing to me. Like, why have they got a postie of Missy Waters in there? <laughs> but sometimes you've just got to test the device. Well, that's it. I've unlocked everything in the town. The trash can home, the school bus home, the lost cave home, the genie lamp. But at the end of the day, you've got to play with your cock and scratch your bollocks, haven't you? Is that all that's left for our poo? Well, yes. One can jump around, sleep on the ground, let go of all them inhibitions, and reminisce about the little fleshy, lowly janitor we used to be, and think, yeah, I did good. What a funky little alien I am now. I indulge in reminiscence about friends, my infatuations, and the enemies and pets we have made along the way. But who could forget the bloke who made this whole adventure worthwhile? <laughs> no, not him. Winky Wee Books. I hope you enjoyed this video about a game which I cherish so dearly and I'd advise you all to maybe indulge your inner poo and abandon oneself to the nostalgic sentiment that this game evokes. Well, for me anyway. Thank you as always for watching. Until next time, fellas. Hi everyone, this is just also a disclaimer. Notice that throughout I've pronounced X-Zizzle, but upon watching other people's videos, they've pronounced it Zizzle. So, you know what? It kind of goes with the theme, you know? You know, I always thought things were pronounced X with the flip X in front. Like, I used to be obsessed with the name Xavier, but it turns out it wasn't Xavier. It was, anyway, you know what? Just do you. I've never said X Zizzle out loud. Have you? I've never said it to anyone else. Have you? No. You know, at the end of the day, X Zizzle, Zizzle. Okay, bye.